I want to bring in someone now that I promise, Ryan. He is kind of a, a regular guy who is making a difference in Saginaw, Michigan. You're on the screen right now, my friend. Hey, how's it going, Dave? Good. And I want to. Does it is it safe to describe you as a regular guy? Oh, most definitely. Okay, so I worked in the media for 25 years. I worked at TV5. I worked at um, in Channel 25. You, what you do, you do a better job of covering breaking news in Saginaw County than the TV stations in town. Um, how did this start? How did you get the idea to do this? But you also do positive news as well. That's a good, we need to point that out. How do you do it? Or where did it all start? Where do you get the idea to start this? Um, so I've kind of been fascinated with, uh, I, I guess you could say crime or police activity. Um, so just kind of understanding why people would actually do the things they do. You know, I like to watch the SVSU shows and in, in law and order. So that kind of always interests me. And then, um, I just kind of started covering local events happening. I didn't really plan on actually starting this. Um, I just showed up and then I just kind of kept going with it. Um, I, I don't know. I didn't really have a like a plan for it. It, it, it just kind of happened, I guess you could say. Is so you're at, you have a Facebook page. Is it, um, what's the name of it? It's called breaking news, nine, eight, nine, breaking news, nine, eight, nine. How many people are following it now? Um, I have 66,000 people. Wow. So you basically, when there's uh, a fire, a car crash, breaking news, you go out and go live on it, right? Yeah, I would say probably nine out of the 10 times I usually go there and either update, you know, what's reported as, you know, could be, uh, there's been a few rare cases where it was false information or not accurate. And then there's been instances where it's actually happened. So I do go live um, just, just I'd say most of the time. So basically you're not really giving your opinion what you're doing. You're showing up and you're showing people what's happening. That's really what you're doing, right? Yes. And I, and I like to update, you know, the information so it's accurate. So everybody knows, um, you know, sometimes things are, you know, cited, I guess you could say it one way. And I just want to update what exactly is happening, you know, information that I can find out. Sometimes I can't always find out the information right away, but I do always, you know, check with the local uh, police departments or whoever's investigating it and get an update. Now you were, you weren't, you didn't go to college and have a journalism degree or anything like that, but you have basic in your, you're interested in, you're doing basically what I did as a reporter when I went out in the streets and I'm sure you get information that you probably know is not true and you don't put it out there, I'm assuming. You you probably get some wild stuff at times. I do. I get a lot of crazy information. I get a lot of um, things that this exactly happened this way. And then when I verify it with, you know, the police departments, it's not accurate. How did you have, and I know the answer to this, but was it tough for you as a independent journalist, content person, when you would go out to a scene, now they're getting to know you, I think. But in the beginning, what, did, were the police not as friendly with you? Or was it weird for them to see someone not like from TV5? Was it What was that like when you would be out there? Were they wondering, hey, who is this guy? Yeah, so when I kind of first started it, I did get, um, uh, I, I would say harassed. Um, I would get told that I can't record. I can't be on a public sidewalk. I've had a few instances where I got tickets and stuff. Um, you know, I, I don't try to make anybody's job more difficult. So obviously if the police, you know, want me to back up or, you know, whatever they're asking me to do, if there's a crime scene, I'll, you know, do what they say. But at first I did have a lot of pushbacks with, you know, various agencies. Um, you know, some of the police departments or police officers, I guess you could say, do not like me recording. Um, they think I'm a First Amendment auditor, but I'm not. I'm not there trying to catch anybody doing anything wrong. Now, if I do catch it, I mean, you know, that would definitely, you know, happen because I'm usually live, but it's not my goal is to catch somebody doing something. I'm just reporting what's going on. 
uh, I report the good and the bad. Yeah, exactly. You also post community events and good positive stuff too, right? Yeah. So like I promote any positive stuff. I actually have a very big social media following called fun things to do in Michigan. Yeah. I have about a hundred thousand people that have joined that group. And, um, I like to promote positive stuff myself. I have three daughters. So anything positive, uh, community, you know, outreach and to get the community together. I love that. That actually is better than going to any crime scene any day. I, um, someone in the comments had, they mentioned, or, let me ask you, are you learning anything? Because someone was saying that at one point, maybe you were shooting video, like when there's a SWAT situation, you you don't want to show like where the police are all the time. Have you learned st things? Have you, have you been doing this about, what are, have you learned things? Have you been doing it? Yes. So yeah, I have did a you know, few mistakes, which I'm sure everybody in the media has did. Um, yeah. I've learned from it. And, you know, I also try to reach out to the local departments and the local governments to make sure that I'm, you know, just accurately doing everything. I, you know, it, it is a learning curve. I have, you know, made a few mistakes, but in the process, I've learned from them. Yeah. Um, in, in some cases where people have gotten raided, I have, you know, had people like think that I would warn somebody, but by the time I'm going live, they're already entering the house. So it's not like they would be, they would have any time, you know, to, you know, have kind of any notice, I guess you would say. Um, but, but I have learned a lot, you know, okay. so um, it, you know, it's, it's a good thing. And I like to learn more information. So anybody that's willing in the, in the local departments or just anybody in general, especially the media, I've had people help me with that to help me accurately um, do, do, do what I like to do, you know, report to the public. Yeah. Um, it's, and it's sad because, and I'll, I'll be honest with you. I can say it now. I'm not under any contract. My television station, when I worked there, NBC 25, Fox 66, when I left, they only had like one reporter to cover all of mid Michigan. So the fact that someone like you, you are covering a lot of this news that the local media cannot get to, um, I, that's kind of sad actually because local meat local news should be local but there's just not enough of them and you focus on pretty much what saginaw saginaw county i do try to focus on saginaw county i do report incidents outside of there so more serious incidents um you know i i definitely do report on it i don't have like it's it's normally michigan in general but saginaw county is my my basis and then if there is a major incident i do report it um a few things with politics but i don't really report too much on politics i mean it's yeah. not something i i do often but if there is a major incident i definitely report it and then also like to report you know if they come to saginaw county so that people can get you know their their information from whoever's running so that way they can make the best choice when they vote. Yeah. yeah. And I mean, I, and I, I know I've heard some people at TV five and the other stations, they watch, they get their news sometimes from you and that's how they know something's going on. I don't, I don't, I don't know if you heard that before, but that's how a lot of people, I, people they know. I, I have. Yeah. I've actually had some pretty big uh, people out there say they get some content from me, which is, you know, pretty good that, you know, I have a lot of people following me and, um, you know, that's why I like to make sure it's accurate information. I, I have such a big reach of people. I don't want to put something out there that's inaccurate. If I ever do, I correct it. If I, you know, made a mistake. So I'm all, all about um, accuracy. Last question. Why, why do it? Why spend all this time? There's so many people, they appreciate you doing it. It's not a job where you're making an hourly wage or anything, but why, why do you do it? Um, so it keeps me busy. Um, I'll be honest. I, I've had some issues with the custody situation and the courts were, you know, I don't know if it's side against dads or anybody, but I, I don't get as much time as I do, do want with my kids. So it keeps me busy, uh, when I'm not working. So, um, it's just something, you know, and, and I plan on hopefully turning it into something bigger. So, uh, you know, may, maybe make it a, a mainstream 
company. You know, that would be my goal if I could. It yeah. it, it isn't my full time job though. You yeah. know, I do have a full time job. Someone asked, they want, how do you know when stuff is going on? And you probably like me. I have a big following. I get a lot of messages, and you're so big now. I bet you you well, you have a police scanner probably, but you probably get messages from people too. Say, hey, there's a lot of cop cars over here. What's going on? How do you get your information without giving away your secrets so that's one thing i've told everybody a magician never reveals the secrets yeah. um so, so he, i have a lot of different ways um luckily but it, sometimes you know the the public does report to me you know some things um what's going on and then it gives me a chance to investigate it i don't just go out and re report what the public says because sometimes like i said not that they're, I don't think people are just going blatantly lying. It's just, they think something happened or, or, you know, this is how it was when it may, it may not have. Yeah. And they, and they, and they may not understand. So I think it's really cool. Um, and, and like you said, there's other people doing it across the country, but, um, and there have been people that have turned this into a big business, um, locally, but you're providing something that the local media cannot. When I worked at TV five back in, 2002 we had like 11 or 12 photographers that could go around town and get all the news now they're lucky if they have a handful of them because you know they're laying off people so you're taking you know doing what their their job kind of for them so um you know we appreciate what you're doing i just wanted to put the face because you're not on camera a lot right you don't put your face on much do you very rarely. I, I've a few times I have, but I, I usually I'm usually recording it. And honestly, like when I go out in public anywhere now, people either somehow they know who I am or they know my voice. So, yeah. you know, right away they 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 had mentioned they I keep them informed, and it's you know it's pretty cool that I have you know such a big following that people even myself I could say myself doing this I've only did it for. I would say about six months now. Yeah. Um, I actually learned a lot with the crime. I actually didn't think there was m as much crime as I report on. So even myself, you know, I and, and I don't report everything. There's a lot of incidents that I don't report on because it happens so common. Um, and honestly, I don't have time to always do it. But um, it, it kind of opened my eyes, you know, with, with all the things going on in our community. And I've been in Saginaw you know, the city my whole life. So it's, it's definitely surprising. And that's a problem I have with the media. The, the media is like my former station. They're relying on the networks and they're not hiring a lot of local people. Local news should be covering local news. And by not covering all of this, the people don't really know what's going on. And that's sad. So I think there is a need for people like you. And like you said, you are, you, you don't have a journalism degree but you're learning. And if you mess up, you own your mistakes and you're growing. So, and, and I'm sure are, there are some police or fire that are you starting to get friendly with them or know them? Yeah. So like, you know, I have a, a mutual respect with all the local departments and even the state departments where they realized I'm, I'm just there to accurately re report the information. So they don't, you know, kind of like me, I don't, I don't get in their way. They don't get in my way. I understand like if they say this is because I'll be honest, a lot of times I'm there before they have time to crime scene, you know, put, put the tape up or yeah. to actually understand what they have to do. So I am there and then they may have me back up, which I, I completely understand. I don't want to make their jobs any harder. So it is a mutual respect and, and they don't make, my job harder or harass me. I haven't had any issues lately. Um, I, I think it works both ways. You know, I'm just reporting what's going on and they're just trying to investigate, you know, what, what the situation was. Gotcha. Oh, someone's asking, are the police scanners in Saginaw? You have a, the you can still hear police activity on the scanners in Saginaw because in Flint, you cannot. Yeah, so Flynn is encrypted. Yeah, some counties do encrypt their scanners. Saginaw does have uh, has a public scanner that you can go on. Uh, it's broadcast to yep. I think it's called. Um, and then you can actually own a scanner, but it yep. it's not encrypted. Some, I believe, even uh, Chicago, I believe, switched to an encrypted scanner. Wow. Um, 
So, you know, there's a lot of cities that have tried to fight that because, you know, people want to know what's going on in their city. So some of them report it afterwards or like the next day they'll report incidents. But I think the public should be aware of what's going on in their community because I think it helps everybody, you know, understand like, hey, if my neighborhood is dangerous or if there's, you know, car break-ins or whatever the situation is, hey, I can keep more alert, not just, you know, wait for something to happen. And I, I think it's good for the public to know what's going on. Absolutely good. Because when I worked in Flint, Flint, the city of Flint was horrible. It would take days to find out if something happened. And uh, yeah, someone like you, you're bringing it out there. So maybe you're making it, making them get the information out there too. So I really appreciate it. Uh, we'll, we'll check back with you every so often, but I just wanted to put a face to the name. And once again, the name of the Facebook page, what is it? 989? So it's Breaking News 989. Okay. And the other yep. one was? The, the other one? Uh, so Fun Things to Do in Michigan. That's a It's a Facebook group, but I try to post a lot of events from free to just overall things going on because we have a lot of good stuff in Michigan. I think just a lot of people don't know about it. We do. You're right. Okay, well, I'll let you go. Have a great week. Thanks so much for taking the time.